Let's just, let's pop this off. Boom, boom. That was millions of damage that you just saw there, right? Let's see what we can do here. Let's see if we can kill. Oh, that's his AOE. I mean, boy, did they buff the heck out of this dude, man. Let's see some big boy numbers here, right? Hey guys, I'm sure coming at you today, Ray Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video. Oh man, so a little backstory here before we jump into it. I re was recording an updated guide on this champion for today's video on my Raid Shadow Legends Champions Guides YouTube channel where I try to hit every champion in the game. This dude impressed me so unbelievably much where I think he really has a case to be made for the best attack based nuker in the entire game. I had to bring it to the main channel. So check this out. We're in Ice Golem Hard 10 right now, level 350. I mean, look at this. Like it's it's absolutely insane. Let's just let's pop this off. Boom. Boom. Uh, a million that was millions of damage that you just saw there, right? And he is he's I've never seen an attack-based nuker quite like him, I have to say. Even though I hate the fact that he's still a metamorph, a secret skill on Siegfried the Nephilim, if you haven't figured out who we're talking about. Uh, this is just absolutely absurd. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see if we can kill. Oh, that's his AoE. I mean, he's bonkers, guys. He is bonkers. Let me give him one more shot here before we jump into the video. Wait till you see, even if you don't have him, please watch, please stay tuned. Wait till you see what this dude can do inside the arena again i have not seen anything quite like it before boy did they buff the heck out of this dude man all right let's slow it down and see these numbers okay uh okay give him some buffs sure 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 yeah okay oh, come on come on newt stop hogging the show bro come on come on come on all right here we go here we go let's see some big boy numbers here right uh boom boom 321 and then over a million. What a monster of a champion. Uh, all right, on to the main video. Siegfried the Nephilim. He got a big buff. Is he still trash? Is he still worthless? Is he now one of the better nukers in the game? Or is it somewhere in between? That's what we're going to answer in today's video, guys. But first, a few shouts to you guys. We have Mackenzie Gurley. We have Daniel Murphy. We have Lion King Blends. We have Zick. Gerodo. Even I am not able to pronounce it. There we go. Uh, and a bunch of you other guys. Uh, shout out to all of you guys who leave these guide requests on a daily basis. As always, I get all my best ideas from you guys because I can't think for myself. Let's go ahead and take a look at the new and improved Siegfried the Nephilim. All right, guys. So here's the thing. Siegfried the Nephilim, right? I still love and hate this dude, right? I love and I hate him. You ungrateful little brat. I have him, right? Obviously. So I love that. I love that I have a mythical because they're so damn hard to get. But boy, oh boy, I still hate, even though he hits like a truck, even though he's got a uh, a much improved kit after the buff, right? His big, big buff. Uh, he, I still really don't like personally. I said this in a video recently on a collab on uh, Chosen's channel. And dude, a lot of his commenters were very mad at me for not liking the fact that he doesn't have an active uh, metamorph. It's just no matter how hard he hits, which is awesome. You know, like he's a great nuker now. Newsflash, he's an insanely good nuker. That's great. Cool. But he still doesn't feel like a mythical to me. Just because his metamorph ability transfers the champion to their alternate form only happens whenever every the last living ally is killed and he's the only living dude left to get the metamorph version of him. So I'm not a fan of that. I'm just going to say or share that bias right out of the gate, okay? Let's take a look at this dude's forms. First of all, he looks insanely good. I mean, every single mythical in the game. I, I forgot the guy's name, but there's one guy I don't really like. Oh, who is it? Now, now it's bothering me. I don't have him, so that's why I don't know his... Uh, I forgot the name. No, no, no. Definitely not him. Uh, is, is it this dude? No, I like this guy, too. I like this guy. Who the heck is the one? Is it the... No, 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 no. Is it... Is it... Is it... No, no. <laughs> I know this is absolutely just... Uh, you know, you're edge of your seat right now, guys. Sorry. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. This guy. Here it is. Well, since you're here, Squidward, we'll give you the new member initiation. Are you ready, Patrick? Ready! Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our club. club! I think he looks cool, but like, if you told me he was an epic, I'd be like, okay, he's a really cool looking epic, but that's it. What does his other form look like? Let's see. Oh, yeah, the Scarab King himself. <laughs> I mean, the lobster, the crab. 
I gotta say, it's definitely unique. It's definitely unique. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's probably my least favorite of the mythicals. Anyway, I digress, guys. I digress. Uh, Siegfried looks awesome, and his second form looks even more awesome, right? Like, this dude, oh my gosh. Look at those wings. Holy mackerel. Wow, I really love the aesthetics of this guy. It's insane. His base attack is very good, which is, is important because he's an attack-based nuker. On his A1, it hits, attacks one enemy two times. First hit transfers all debuffs from this champion to the target. Second hit then increases the duration of all debuffs on the target by one turn. Increased duration of all debuffs on the target by one turn is a very powerful ability to have on an A1 skill. It does require accuracy, though, which is a bummer because the rest of his base does not require accuracy at all. So it's, the choice is yours, really. That's one of the most, I guess the first fundamental choice you need to make when building this champion is, do you want to get utility out of that A1 ability? Personally, I don't, on my account, in the ways that I use this champion. But you may want to. Maybe you're using him as a clan boss damage dealer and you really want to extend the duration. Or against other bosses, maybe it's part of your strategy. In that case, just slap on an accuracy banner and you'll probably be looking good. Attacks to all enemies. Each critical hit fills this champion's turn by 25%. So quick math, I'm no mathematician. But in the arena, you can get a 100% turn meter fill if you land four critical hits. Just be careful against force affinity. Recess the cooldown of Rage of Nephilim skill if this attack kills an enemy. That's his hard hitting A3 we'll get to in a moment. Recess the cooldown of all of his champion skills if the attack kills two enemies or more. That makes him, you know, not that you're looking for a mythical to be your campaign farmer, but that makes him a great campaign farmer. You can just keep A2ing A2, A2, and you're done. Uh, on the A3, Rage of Nephilim attacks one enemy, ignores 50% of the target's defense, will attack all remaining enemies with any surplus damage if the initial target is killed, fully heals his champion if the initial kit kills an enemy. This is all on a three-turn cooldown. On his passive, Stay the Blade, three-turn cooldown if his champion's about to get killed by a fatal hit, it blocks that incoming damage and places a block damage on this champion, so you don't take any damage and you get the block damage, then you get a heal, 50% of your max HP and a full turn meter. This is very important in this guy's kit because it keeps him alive when everybody else dies. God, you know, if I had a dollar for every time you mentioned that, I would buy a tank and I would blow you thus giving him an opportunity to change forms to revive everybody on his secondary form. Increase ally attack by 35% on the aura. Not bad. Second form. He's got the wings, he's got the sword, and he looks badass. Uh, you can see that he changes his base stats to more of a support build, right? A little bit of defense, a lot of HP, still a lot of speed, still a decent amount of attack, but now he's a support champion. He's got an AoE with a heal on the A1. On the A2, he's got a cleanse in a heal in a block debuff for two turns on a three-turn cooldown. And Light of the Beyond, his A3 is an AoE revive on a four-turn cooldown with a block damage on all allies, 50% HP, 50% turn meter. It's a good revive because AoE revive on a four turn cooldown is considered really good. Block damage is a pretty dang good way to keep them alive. 50% HP is average to below average for a legendary or mythical reviver. However, he does have 50% turn meter, which is about average. Uh, and you add in the block damage and the four turn cooldown. It's a pretty elite revival skill, right? Uh, Metamorph. He can actually metamorph on his own. But of course, you have to have everybody dead to get this version of him, right? Uh, decreased damage taken from skills by 20% on the passive, which is really nice as well. So what do we think of this champion? Listen, there's a lot of synergy here. I talked some smack at the beginning. I'm sure I offended some of you guys because there's, uh, there's a Siegfried the Nephilim fan club walking out there. I think that he's a really cool champion, right? And honestly, if you can get over the fact that you can't control him going to his second form, uh, then he, it's still cool because like there's a lot of synergy there, right? Him keeping himself alive with the passive on the base form allows him to actually get to his alternate form in a lot of cases, but not in all. I've had many times where he just died or maybe two or three champions died and he was one of them and he couldn't revive anybody because he's dead, you know? So it's not always gonna work out, but in some situations, it certainly can. For example, like a Sand Devil, right? San normal Sand Devil, I'm not seeing a lot of players use him, but a Sand Devil in Cursed City, where you're very limited in who you can use, I've used him, it's not on this rotation, so I can't show you, but I've used him in, like, when the Sand Devil hits really hard, Everybody wipes. He doesn't wipe because he blocks the damage, heals himself or whatever, you know, and uh, he can't block the damage, but he can heal himself. And uh, then he revives everybody, you know? Let's go ahead and 
Uh, I think it can block. I said that, and I'm like, well, how did that work? I think the block damage does work from his passive, but the block damage buff or unkillable buff, whatever he has, does not work. Either way, he stayed alive and he revived everybody. That's what you need to know. All right, guys, before we take him into the arena, which I think is one of the best places for this champion, you know, but not certainly you could use him as a nuker anywhere in the game now. Uh, let's go ahead and just check him out in Curse City, right? So I have him here with Foley, uh, with Zenogre, with Inquisitor Shamil, and with uh, Cold Heart on this double boss in this rotation of Curse City Hard. Uh, Centrano. So we have Foley and he, I mean, everybody on this team is a damage dealer, but you can see that Friedmund, <laughs> Friedmund, did I just say that? Siegfried? Mm, <laughs> Sorry, guys. What happens when you get old, you start combining words randomly, you know? Good thing I only have one child because I'd, I'd be that parent always calling my child the other one's name, you know? Uh, anyway, I digress. Mm -hmm. It's Foley and, uh, and Siegfried are going to be the uh, the main damage dealers here, right? Now, unfortunately, he uses A1 there, but if he had used his A2, he could have gotten that kill off that minion and then AoE attack everybody afterwards. We don't have any heals or anything support on this team, so let's see if maybe he uses his, uh, his secret skill Metamorph and revives everybody. Let's see. Or maybe we'll lose. I don't know. All right, so Foley does a good job taking everybody down on the left-hand side. That was good. It looks like no. It looks like we're going to be successful here, right? And just on full auto too, which is nice uh, with the Fire Knight. So that's that. You see that? You see that big hit? Oh man! Even when I hated this dude because he didn't do much damage either, I still loved. I still loved the animations on that A3 ability, right? Going in with the biggest sword. In all of Raid Shadow Legends, I don't know if my man's comp uh, trying to overcompensate for something, but is that a big sword? Are you just happy to see me, Siegfried? That is a big, it's cool though. Like the anime, I think the animation is really cool on this dude, right? He puts out, whoa, fully out damaged him by a billion, but fully is plus four and fully awakened. <laughs> so take that into consideration. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not overly impressed to be, to be real with you guys, right? But still, he can dish out some damage, right? He can be a good PvE damage dealer uh, in, in a lot of situations, specifically wave content or content where you think, like an Ice Golem, where you think you might die and you might need to have him revive everybody in his alternate form, you know? I've actually used him in my Ice Golem team. I tried to find a faster team than the team that I'm using right now. I mean, that's what we all do, right? We just try to make incremental improvements on the squads that we're using. Uh, I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually experimenting with an Aislinn, who I'll, I'll put a guide out tomorrow maybe on the channel, maybe Sunday, I don't know, in a few days. Uh, but I'm actually using this team right now, and I really like it. It's not the fastest, but I tried Siegfried in there for like a Taurus instead or whatever, you know, it's not super important. The only crucial champion for me is a walking tomb drawing. I used to run him in Elva, you know, in a seer team, in a seer comp. Uh, but I'm running this comp because of the three banner lord thing, you know, like uh, having Aislinn and stuff. Uh, I tried uh, Siegfried on this team. I just couldn't get him to consistently or to go faster, you know, than the team that I already have. But obviously we're talking about like S tier freaking team, you know. So uh, I think a lot of players is what I'm trying to say is could use him in Ice Golem as well. Uh, not just as a damage dealer, but as a breaking case of emergency reviver as well. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the arena here. In the last video I asked you guys, the last video that we did a nuker spotlight at least, I asked you guys if you had a problem with me using kind of this base arena team with Lydia, Shuzen, and Crixia. Basically a lockout, a buffer, extra turn, and a debuffer. Uh, because I, I've been basically using these three champions with whatever damage dealer I want to spotlight when I do an arena nuker video here on the channel And I think only one person was like nah switch it up and everybody else was like no Give us the best case scenario on a nuker and I feel like this is the best case scenario because we have a uh, Shuzen comes in there and gives him increased attack increased crit rate increased crit damage not that we need the increased crit rate uh, And then we have the debuffs on on the enemies, right? Anyway, I didn't even show you the build yet. Let me show you the build, but let me just, let's go ahead and smack somebody. What do you say? It's UDK here. So let's try out the A2 first. Boom. I mean, we're not, I barely even saw those numbers. Barely even saw those numbers. Don't look at them. You don't deserve to look at them. Let me show you really quickly here how I have them built. It's probably going to be super obvious how I have them built. Sorry, I'm, I'm like, 
I, I did like a whole half the spotlight <laughs> without even showing you the build. I apologize, guys. Total stats are going to be 47k on the HP, 6500 on the attack, 242 on the speed, 104 and 251. I have 245 accuracy, which is actually enough in a lot of PvP, uh, PvE situations to extend those debuffs on the A1. Uh, but I'm not prioritizing accuracy uh, in this particular build. But we already talked about why you might need that if you do want to take advantage of that A1 ability. Uh, the priority stats are simple. He's uh, he's a nuker, nuker, nuker is how I look at him, right? Because you can't count on that second form unless you have a team built entirely around that second form. But even with this build on second form, let me show you. I mean, he's still tanky enough to be able to heal everybody or whatever, revive and heal or something, you know? Uh, so I would build him for the base form and not worry so much about the second form, you know? Cause you're not even sure you're gonna get it. Uh, so I build him as a nuker extraordinaire. So priority stats are gonna be number one, crit rate, 100%. Number two, uh, attack and crit damage, like 2A, 2B, attack, crit damage. And then after that, I would try to build some speed, maybe a little bit of accuracy and survivability in terms of stat priorities. On his banner, I have, again, we talked about how you could go accuracy, but I have attack, looking for speed as a substat. I have crit damage with crit damage ascension stats with a little bit of accuracy on that amulet. And then I have uh, attack, obviously, on the ring as well. Attack scales so well with a 1663 base attack, so take advantage with a lot of good attack percentage substats, however you build them. We have speed on the boots. You could go attack percentage on the boots. A little bit of a slower build if you prioritize speed substats elsewhere on the build. And then you're looking at like a nuking behemoth. You can probably, if you're end game, you can probably get him to eight, 9,000 attack if you go attack percentage on the boots as well. Just make sure you're not building him too slow. With a 110 base, we're already rocking a very high base for a nuker, which is great. So if you can get 90 speed off of all the substats and you aim for 200, you should be able to throw this guy in attack percentage on the boots, right? I don't have it on today's uh, showcase, but it's worth talking about, right? I think the best way to build this dude without a doubt is going to be lethal and cruel, you know, if you have it. If not, savage or and or lethal and crit damage, you know, those to me are the best sets. You could go perception and get a little accuracy and speed while you're at it as well. Um, attack percentage on the chest, and we have crit damage on the gauntlets. He's in really good gear, obviously, like a lot of nice ascensions and good stats, uh, but he's in a lot of five-star gear, too. He has a rare amulet. He's got five-star gauntlets. He's got a five-star chess piece. So, you know, good, but not like end-end game build here, not elite, uh, what I'm showcasing. I do have Soul Reap on him as a, uh, as a blessing. Uh, I really like Soul Reap. You can probably tell because I default to it a lot. Unless I have like six star. If I have a six star, I'm probably, depending on where I'm using the champion, obviously. Uh, but I might go with Crushing Rend. Uh, or I might go with Cruelty. I might go with an Epic uh, option there. Uh, but Or in the arena, I might just go with Polymorph. I know that's crazy and I've mentioned it before. But even on Nukers, we're seeing all the endgame players. If they have, they're lucky enough to have a six star. They switch it over to Polymorph now because that's how broken and busted Polymorph is. And keep in mind, you don't need accuracy if it's a full six star. For blessings, we have, uh, you know, typical Nuker blessing build, or excuse me, mastery build. Um, so many things to consider, I'm losing track. Uh, we went defense, we ended with retribution to get those counterattacks in, right? Hopefully get some buff extensions and transfers and whatever. Um, on the offensive side of things, most importantly, we have uh, bring it down. We have a single out, ruthless ambush, cycle of violence. You guys know what masteries I like if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time. I love me some Helm Smasher, obviously as a tier six choice. With Helm Smasher in lethal gear, keep in mind, with the A3, he has the potential of ignoring 100% enemy defense, and that is sheer damage, full penetration uh, with that big sword of his, right? So let's go into it here, guys. Oh, we're going against a Lord Shazar team lead. Let's see what he's got, let's see what he's got for us. All right, goes in, we lock, oh, this is gonna be, this is gonna be disgusting. Get ready to brace yourself for this damage. They're a very squishy team. Who you wanna go after, guys? You know what? I would say Mashal because he's obviously the uh, the Spirit Affinity or Lord Shazar, but I'm sure some of you guys are bitter that you started playing after Ninja was a free champion. Let's get revenge for you. Boom! 
from 329,000. I didn't see that number, but was there? Was there a million? Did I, I, I'm sure I, there couldn't have been, but I can't rewind. You guys can. You can check it out. Was that 100,000 or was that a million damage? <laughs> All right, let's go against another UDK. Actually, this team's kind of annoying with UDK and uh, Hegemon. Uh, let's go against a tankier team like this, right? A Sifi, Roto, Sun Wukong team. This is like... This is arena meta, you know, all together, right? For the most part. Uh, okay, let's come in. Let's come in. Okay, this is going to be a cool opportunity to see him use both abilities because we can open up with, again, uh, the Rage of Nephilim. Let's see if we can kill a Siffy, if we can one-shot a Siffy instead of going after like an easy Sun Wukong, which wouldn't be a bad decision. If I was live arena and I wasn't confident I was going to kill Siffy, I would go after Sun Wukong just to get that, that surplus damage and probably fry everybody else. Either way, though, I want to save the, uh, the AoE. Eh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, here we go. Jesus, man. 405,000 damage on uh, <laughs> on Sun Wukong and an easy one shot. Am I okay? And look at that. And the A. Oh my God, dude. He is something, huh, guys? Damn. Damn, man. He hits. Like, I'll be real with you guys. I did a little test run a couple times actually on this champion, you know, before recording. Uh, like, and this isn't, I didn't, <sighs> ooh, oh, golly, that is so much damage, dude, okay, this guy is unbelievable, wow, what are those multipliers, let's, let's just watch them one more time, uh, here we go again, let's go in, Siffy, with the big, okay, okay. She got the, uh, uh, let's go back again. Let's go back again. Let's go, let's get revenge on Siffy right now. Let's kill her now. Okay, that was dead. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, give him a turn. Sure, give him a turn. Let's go in. Let's get her. Get her. Get her. Boom. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious, Siegfried. Yeah, I mean, who cares about the next form when the dude does so much freaking damage like that, huh? Golly. Uh, what are his multipliers? He's ranked a 4.5 now on hellhades.com. Uh, a 5 out of 5 in the arena. Dark Fae, Eternal Dragon, Fire Knight 4.5, Fire Knight 4.5. Doom Tower, four and a half. Good God. Two attack on the A1 times two hitter. How's he doing over there in the arena? Oh, <laughs> we're not on auto, Ash. We're not on auto, dude. All right. There we go. Man, for a champion that's still so infuriating, to me at least, with... Excuse me. With, oh, that's just the AoE right there, man. That's just the A2. Uh, for a champion who's still infuriating that he can't be metamorphed, it's hard to complain about this dude, right? I mean, golly. And look at that. You can't kill the dude. Taurus comes in. He's got the, the heal, the block damage, the, you know, the whole nine. Boom. God, he's insane. Do you guys think he's the game? Dare I say this? Do you think he's the game's best nuker? I thought we already knew that. He's a 4.6 multiplier on the uh, the A2. A 2 times 2 on the, on the A1. Uh, but then he has the 6 multiplier with a potential 100% ignore defense. Yeah. Step aside, like Thea the Tomb Angel. This is, it's got to be the best nuke in the game at this point. It's for attack base. I mean, for anything based, even over Lizard, I don't know. I, I'm not saying definitively because I don't have Lizard, uh, Mythical liver, Lizard, but god guys this is i am this is insane this is insane let's do it again here guys who you want to kill i guess we go after poor arby boom 300 whoa oh god god 
<laughs> All right, guys. I think you get the point. This guy is an elite, elite nuker now. Holy moly. What do you guys think? Do you think he's the best attack, best nuker in the game? The thing about it is like, forget again. It's not even about the. Uh, let's go against this team, Taras Marichka. We're getting like into the more high quality teams here. The fact that he can keep him the, for a uh, oh, we might lose this one. We might we got a we got an early polymorph. We might lose this one. Uh, for an attack based nuker to be able to keep themselves alive is crucial, right? I mean, the reason I don't use a lot of like Baron, even though he's a boss, is because to get to that A3 can be challenging. Even in Itwi, who I have at plus four fully uh, awakened, I don't use him a ton because it's it's tough to get to him, even with stone skin on him, you know? Uh, but this guy has so much with the passive of the heal and the block damage and all that stuff and preventing the fatal hit. I mean, it starts to become a reality that, hey, maybe, maybe I can. So we can't do anything here because of UDK. So we might lose this one. But again, like, that's very strong, you know? Oh, look at this. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Listen, this is going to be a loss, obviously. But we get to see him transform, right? I mean, what would a champion guy be without being able to actually see him transform? He's going to be perma-stunned, but... We could have revived and healed and blocked damage there, you know, in a perfect world. So I have to say, guys, this dude is absolutely bonkers. Hopefully you've enjoyed this spotlight. Again, I walked into this video thinking it was going to be for the Champion Guide YouTube channel. But I'm actually going to put this one on the Big Boy channel. This is going to be on the Big Boy channel because I had to share this with my great, my greater audience as a whole. But I'll throw it up on both channels, actually. Uh, hey, much love. Thanks for watching till the end. And as always, take care, guys.